Today, the Adventure State installs the K-Speed KS2 offshore ride plate. Thank you, Kevin Shaw from the Watercraft Journal and JD from JD's Waterworld for all of your help. Stay tuned to the end of the video as Kevin Shaw gives us a detailed explanation of ride plate variations. And if you haven't yet, please be sure to like the video, comment below, and let us know what ride plate that you are using, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with us as we release new content. All right, so we're gonna remove the stock ride plate here. It's got six six millimeter Allens, and then you've got four Phillips bolts that hold the paddle wheel in place. That's it. So you need to remove these four Phillips bolts that hold the paddle wheel uh, speed sensor in place. When we reinstall those, we're gonna use blue Loctite as we are on all of the ride plates. I like to remove the back and the forward ones first and then leave the middle ones. That makes it easier to handle it. So, you know, look, there's guys out there that ride sea dues Yamahas. I think it's great. You know, getting out in the water is absolutely great no matter what you ride. But I just wanted to show you guys something here. So as you can see, the Kawasaki's got these, these are brass marine grade ferrules that are set and molded into the fiberglass. Now these are never gonna come out. They're never gonna tear out. They've been using this design for almost 20 years now without any failures or any any problems. But I just wanted to take a moment to show you how strong these anchors are on the Kawasaki hulls. They really are built to a higher standard than the competitors, and you can rest assured that these will never fail. These will outlive all of us, probably. You're gonna wanna remove your reverse bucket before anything else, and you're gonna have to put this reverse bucket on in your new ride plate before installing it in a ski. All right, so this is gonna wash off. It needs to be reapplied fairly often, but I'm just uh, putting a little bit of marine grease on all the surfaces here. Helps it reassembly and it helps these parts. So then with these bushings here, you're gonna to wanna to coat the outsides of the bushings with grease, insert those in. And then these bolts here, so these ones had red Loctite on them interestingly enough. So we're just gonna go ahead and put some blue Loctite on those and put those back in place, which will be more than sufficient for our purposes. And you wanna ensure that the bucket can move, move freely. You can over tighten these, but because of those ferrules, that are in there, you can uh, cinch it. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and make sure that our paddle wheel sensor is oriented the right way, which it is just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and get everything reinstalled. I like to get these middle bolts first and that kind of just gets it in place, balanced, so you can work on the rest. These are five millimeter Allen. Okay, so then we have this, this quick connector right here. But before we do anything else, you could see that, I just wanna show you these linkages here. So here's your steering linkage. You see how that's dry? That needs to look like that. This is corrosion block marine grease. We're also gonna make sure, wow, that really gets down in there, huh? That, that fitting there is literally in the, you want to make sure that that's all got a nice bead of grease. That ball joint right there. We're going to coat that. Then we're going to pull that back like that. Snap that on and then I'm going to go ahead and slather that with some grease. You can see this, this pivot right here. 
get that all greased up. And then uh, this is your trim linkage right here. Get that on the cable, on the connector. And then the steering, this, uh, you can see this rod here from the steering assembly. We're gonna make sure that that's all lubed up. Now, every ride or every other ride, I apply grease to these fittings mm -hmm. like this here. Also your step, you can go ahead, put a little bit like that. A good portion of this grease will wash off and, and that's fine. Previously, K-Speed used the pump wedge to force the nozzle to bring the bow of the ski up and help you pick up some speed. What they realized though is that they could get so much more, not only the same effect of the pump wedge, but some better handling if they revised their ride plate. So we got our hands on the new K-Speed KS2 ride plate. The KS2 is a little bit different because the KS2 is designed for offshore riding. You're gonna see these very large deep scallops. These deep scallops do a couple things. First, they radically increase the ramp. So we're getting that nose really, really high up. Second of all, because you have this spine in the center, it's gonna act as a natural skeg. This is gonna give you a lot of bite and a lot of direction when it comes to handling and especially tracking in really big surf. So the reason why Chris chose to go with the KS2 offshore plate is primarily because he does a lot of riding out in the ocean. He goes out into the Great Lakes. So he really wants this, this Cowie to be able to track as true as possible in that really big rough water. We could not thank Kevin Shaw with the Watercraft Journal and JD from JD's Water World enough for helping us bring this content to you.